Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be building a junk journal using some supplies found at Dollar Tree and other supplies from around my home and craft room. You can make a junk journal pretty much out of anything. I will be building this journal off of a biscuit box and I've made journals using cereal boxes, scraps of packaging, reused book boards. So you can use anything you like or already have on hand. That's what makes a junk journal really cool. Um, but I get asked quite a lot what exactly is a junk journal. And I do have a video on that that I made a few years back as well as other junk journal tutorials and journal with me videos on my junk journal playlist. And I will have that playlist linked down below for you if you wanna go ahead and check that out. But this tutorial is going to be sped up because it is start to finish, but I will do my best to explain my process. So here we go, let's go ahead and get started. So to start out, I'm using a biscuit box and I'm just going to open it up and then what I'm going to do is tear off or trim off um, all of the edges around those creases. And that's going to give me the base or the structure of my journal. So you can also, again, use a cereal box or like a cracker box, Cheez-Its. Um, they all pretty much have the same structure. You just cut it down to whatever size that you want. So that's what I'm doing right here with my paper trimmer. You don't have to have a paper trimmer to make a junk journal, but it does make it a heck of a lot easier to um, put your signatures together later on. It just comes in very handy instead of hand cutting with scissors every single page. So after I have the edges cut off, I'm just going to take my ruler and run it up and down what is going to be the front and back cover of the junk journal just to make sure that everything is cut correctly and then make adjustments with my paper trimmer. So that's what I'm doing right here. And I think this journal was just under six and a quarter or I'm sorry, six and a half by nine and a quarter. And that's around usually the size that I like my personal junk journals to be. Um, but you can again do any size that you like and then I'm just taking an extra scrap from one of those flaps that I cut off to reinforce what is going to be the spine and you want to make sure you do this because you're going to be sewing or hand binding in um, your signature so you want the spine to be somewhat durable you could even triple stack this if you want and I just attached it with double-sided tape but you can use glue if you want. So now that I have this very easy and basic structure for my journal, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it with some Dollar Tree fabric. I love Dollar Tree's fabric scraps. They're the perfect size to cover or line a journal and it, you have just a little bit extra to be able to add embellishments to your journal as well after you're done building it, which is what I really like. So I'm just cutting off the excess with my Dollar Tree fabric roller cutter. And I'm using Fabri-Tac. You can use any fabric glue that you like or even tacky glue if you want. This is just the brand that I prefer for making journals. And so I'm just doing one section at a time and laying it down on the inside of that print printed fabric. And then after I do that, I'm going to go ahead and cut off the corners or excess fabric on the corners, kind of like the same way you would make a book cover, a textbook book cover, if you if you ever had to do that at school. I, I used to do that. Um, back in the 90s, we had to cover our own books, so kind of like the same way. And then after I do that, I'm just going to line the inside edges with that fabric tack and I kind of just use my finger to mark where I need to put the glue. So after each section, I kind of fold it in to allow flexing or allow the fabric to be flexible. Um, and there's going to be some creases in it, but that's fine because I'm gonna end up covering that up later with some scrap paper. So I do the top and bottom and then I fold in the sides as well. And next, I'm going to go ahead and line the inside of my journal with these scrap pieces of a gift bag from Dollar Tree that I had used in a previous project, um, and those were the scraps. And then I'm also going to be using a sheer ribbon to go ahead and make a closure. And how I do that is I just add a strip of glue across the middle, and then after that, I just cover up the ribbon 
on the inside of the journal with those gift bag scrap pieces and that's going to hide the ribbon but you can also use more fabric to line the inside or you can use um, scrapbooking paper whatever you want I just decided to repurpose um, a Dollar Tree gift bag and I was trying to use as many things from Dollar Tree as possible in this video so you guys could see all of the ways I guess you can use different things that you might not have thought of. And this next part is completely optional. You don't have to use a sewing machine. You don't have to sew in your journals if you don't want to. I just like adding um, sewing in my journals. I like the texture of the thread. And I just took some Dollar Tree heart trim that I found during Valentine's Day to add to the front cover. And then I also went around the entire border of my journal just to kind of reinforce um, the fabric and the gift bags on the inside and just kind of make sure everything stays put. But again, you don't have to do this part if you don't want to. And I had never actually used a sewing machine until I started making junk journals, which is really cool because I actually taught myself by watching YouTube tutorials. So that's just another reason why I love YouTube is because you can learn so many different skills um, and you can kind of like self teach yourself how to do things. And so here is my awesome sewing job. <laughs> Not really. There's a couple of straight lines. And then around the trim, I kind of went crazy. I, I decided to try to double up. I got a little cocky um, <laughs> thinking I was my skills were better than they actually are. But that's fine because um, I actually think it makes it look a little bit more shabby chic. But I can't cut or draw or sew a straight line to save my life. Um, but right here, I'm just taking out my um, Distress inks. I'm trying to pick out a color that I think would go well with this journal. And I'm just going to take these Dollar Tree makeup brushes and kind of rub the ink around and kind of ink up all of the edges. So now that my junk journal cover or um, structure is pretty much done, I need to go ahead and start gathering things to make the signatures. So I picked out a few things that I thought might look good with this journal. So I picked out some Dollar Tree note cards, some treat sacks, and stationery from Dollar Tree as well as my personal collection um, in my craft room. And then I also have some children's book pages from a Peter vintage Peter Rabbit book that I actually had um, made a Peter Rabbit themed junk journal for my son's baby book or his like baby memories. So this was what was left over. So I thought these might look good um, since it is a spring themed journal. And then I also have some coffee and tea dyed paper doilies as well as coffee dyed paper. So I'm demonstrating how I do that um, here. And what I like to do is just do a big batch. So I have a pan full of coffee and a pan full of tea. And that's actually Dollar Tree tea as well. Um, so I just, I'm taking a bunch of papers from this Dollar Tree notebook uh, or sketching pad, and I'm just letting it soak in the coffee dye, or I'm sorry, the coffee and the tea. And the longer it sits, the darker it's going to be. And to dry the paper, you can either let it sit out in the sun, you can hang it on a line, um, which I sometimes do in my kitchen. I'll just hang up a bunch of like twine and just hang my paper from the cabinets. <laughs> it drives my husband crazy. But um, you can also 
dry them in your oven in small batches. It does take quite a while, um, but you could also do that at your uh, dry dryers, I'm sorry, your oven's lowest temperature and again, dry them in batches. And you can also fold or crumple your paper. That's going to show up as like a line in your paper. It's going to make it look older than it is. That's the whole point of um, doing this. If you um, are wondering why I'm coughing and coffee dyeing and tea dyeing paper, it just gives paper a vintage or old look. And I'm also doing that with the Dollar Tree doilies as well. But here's what those doilies look like after they're dry. You can also use different kinds of envelopes. I have a clasp envelope. You can also use book pages. I have some botanical book pages, um, some more stationery. I thought this Dollar Tree blank card would go perfect since how the cover has butterflies and it's kind of like the whole theme um, of this journal once I get everything kind of put together. You can put music papers and a good place to find music paper is from thrift shops and you can use regular colored paper or even construction paper. And here is all of that coffee dyed paper. So see how it's kind of wrinkly and crinkly and old looking. Um, and then I just have some um, more plant inserts as well. And then here are some more vintage children's books. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to use these ones or the Peter Rabbit pages. So. I brought these out and this is kind of me just sorting through what I might want to use, not necessarily everything that I'm going to use. But this is kind of how my process starts when I start thinking um, of how I want my journal to look or I guess like the whole theme of it. So I kind of just start gathering things and then I filter them out later when I'm actually putting the signatures together, if that makes sense. And I also like to use scrapbook paper in my journals. Um, I really like double-sided scrapbook paper over single-sided scrapbook paper because I don't like white blank pages in my journals, but I really liked the English um, tea rose garden or English Rose Garden paper pack. And then I also have some extra Tim Holtz double-sided scrapbook paper um, left over from a previous journal. So when you're putting your signatures together, you really want to make sure um, that you don't make your pages too big. So what I like to do is use a single I guess, template. So I'm just using one of those coffee dyed papers, which is eight and a half by 11. So I just fold it in half and I decide that I don't want any of my papers to be any bigger than this piece of paper. It's fine if they are smaller and I do want some of my papers to be smaller. I don't want them all to be the same, but they just can't exceed the size of my template. Otherwise, they're going to be sticking out of the journal when I go to sew in the signatures and it just won't look right. It'll look all wonky, but I can add like fabric tabs and trim to the edges later on when I embellish my journal, but I do want all of my papers to be neatly bound in the journal together. So right here, I'm just going through all of my scrapbooking paper and I'm taking off the trim at the top. And then I'm just going to fold all of the scrapbooking papers in half. And for the rose garden papers, um, I decide just to keep them like this, just fold them in half, I will trim them later on. Um, but for the Tim Holtz papers, I actually end up making those into double-sided pockets and I'll show you, or um, I guess double page pockets, not double-sided. Um, but I'm just folding these in half and I'm using my bone folder and here is the Tim Holtz paper. So I decided to make these into pocket pages. So I just fold up the bottom and then fold it in half. And when it's bound in the journal, it's going to have two different um, pockets and I can sew the edge again later on. Um, but that's just what I'm doing with some of the Tim Holtz papers as well as some papers later on. And now that all of my scrapbooking paper is folded how I want it, I'm going to take that template page 
and I'm going to use it to figure out how much I need to cut off. Um, so I just trim off the excess on the scrapbooking paper and set those off to the side in a little pile um, because I can use those later on as well or in another journal or um, paper craft project. So I decided to keep all of like the, the scrapbook papers the same size um, because I do usually like to use those as the cover of my signatures. And then I'm just going to go through the rest of the papers and fold them in half or fold them um, how I want. And what I mean by folding them how I want is um, not all of the pieces in my journal do I want folded directly in half, especially when it comes to like the illustrated pages or the children's book pages. I don't want to fold those directly in half because it's going to cut off the image. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just leave an inch or two um, on the fold or on the crease. That's all you really need to be able to bind a signature in is just a, a one to two inches on um, each side of the page and you'll be able to bind um, the signatures in just like a normal piece of paper that would be folded in half. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a second when I find an example. I think this is actually um, an example right here is that I, I folded it, see, two, about two inches instead of directly in half because I wanted it to fit in my journal. Um, and I also made a pocket out of that as well. And so here is another example of that, not folding things directly in half or papers directly in half. Like I want the, this Peter Rabbit image to be all on one page. I don't wanna fold this illustration in half. And so I just folded a couple inches on one side so that I can bind it in. And I will go back and trim that paper down as well along with these music sheets because again, I didn't want to cut these off. I wanted the, the name of the song to be at the top and I knew if I folded it directly in half, it would, it would cut that off and you wouldn't be able to read it. And then after all of my papers are folded in half, then I bring out my paper trimmer again and cut down all of the papers that needed to be trimmed. And then after all of my papers are trimmed down, I just go and kind of sort all of my different papers into different categories so that when I'm building the journal, it's a little bit easier um, for me to pick things out. Now that all of my papers are trimmed and sorted, it's time to assemble the signatures. So I just start with one of my largest pieces of paper, so the scrapbooking paper, and then I begin layering different papers from the different piles that I made, and I layer them on top of each other. So I lay them flat and line up the folds or the creases to each piece that I layer on top. And the more you switch up the paper type and size, of papers that you're using, the more, I guess, junk journaly or um, shabby chic your journal is going to look. But of course, do whatever makes you happy. If you want to do all the same types of paper or all the same sizes of paper, you can certainly do that um, and still be able to follow this tutorial for the binding process because it's going to be the same. Once I'm happy with how my signature looks, I'm just gonna go back and try to line everything up um, as best as I can and then I will paper clip everything in place until I'm ready to bind it in my journal and I ended up I think doing 10 pages per signature so out of each signature I'm going to get 40 journaling spots or 40 pages um, because there's four sides per page so in total I will get 120 pages or 120 journaling spots 
for my entire journal. Um, I hope that made sense. But there's really no set rules on how many papers you can put in each signature. I try to do the same amount per signature just so it looks right when it's bound in my journal. And you can do as many signatures as you want. Um, just keep in mind that the more you add to your journal, the bulkier it's going to get when you go to add things in it. So you want to keep that in mind as well when you're building your signatures is that you will probably be adding a bunch of things to your journal, which is going to make it harder to close if you go overboard and fill it up too much when you are building it. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Before I begin the binding process, I need to make two templates for use of marking where I need to bind the signatures in. So I just start by cutting two pieces of cardstock that are the same size as the spine, folding it in half, and then folding those pieces into the half fold, making three different folds. And then I go the other direction, again, folding it in half, lengthwise and then folding those two sides into the middle fold. So this is going to give me marks for three different signatures and three different points where I bind those signatures in. So after I do that, I can just take my pen and go find where those lines meet or cross and then mark that with my pen. And so for the first template, I'm going to have nine dots and then I'm going to label one end as the top. This is the direction I'm going to place it inside of the journal when I go to bind. And then for the second template, I'm just going to fold that directly in half lengthwise and then use my first template that I made as a guide just to make three dots. And so I'm just kind of lining it up right next to it and then marking where I need to place those three dots. The second template is going to be used inside of each signature um, to mark the holes. And then the first template is going to be used to mark the holes in the spine itself before I bind the signatures in. And you'll see what I'm talking about, um, but make sure that you do label both of your templates as the top. So right here, I'm just paper clipping or binder clipping the top of that template right inside of my journal. So now it's time to punch the holes in the spine with the template and a pokey tool. Um, I like to use an owl, which is in my left hand there, but for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna try to use this Dollar Tree tool. And you'll want to place something underneath um, the cover while you are punching the holes both in the spine and when you put in your signature. So I like to use a book because I like to repurpose the books as well in my journals. Um, so I tried using this little Dollar Tree pokey tool and the needle actually went up into the tool. So it didn't end up working out because um, it wasn't able to go all the way through because you wanna make sure that your holes are going all the way through. So I tried it out as much as I could and then I decided to use this little nail detail tool, which I have used in the past with making journals before I purchased an owl. And you can pick these up at Dollar Tree, I've seen them before. Um, so I just wanted to try different things for you guys to show that you don't need like, I guess, professional or um, any sort of special tools. You can try to use what you have on hand. Um, so I'm just making sure that those holes are going all the way through the spine, through both of those layers of the biscuit box and the fabric. So after all of my holes are punched through the spine, I can go ahead and set that off to the side and start working on my signatures. So for the signatures, I am just flicking back through, making sure everything um, is where I want it and everything is lined up correctly to be, um, to have the holes punched through. So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm just kind of flicking through, making sure everything's creased correctly um, and lined up because once I put the holes in, that is where they're going to be bound into the spine. Um, 
So once I do that, I just binder clip everything back into place. You could also use paper, long paper clips, um, bobby pins. I've used bobby pins before too when I didn't have any binder clips or paper clips. Um, so now I'm going to take my second template and line it up with the top. And using an open book is really easy for this part because it just settles naturally down into the crease. It's a lot easier. So I'm just doing pretty much the same thing I did with the spine, but I'm just doing it in the center of each signature. And again, just make sure your holes go all the way through the signature. And then I'm going to do the same thing and repeat the process for the second and third signature. For binding, you're going to need a thick needle. So um, I found this Crafter Square assortment that has a couple of needles that I could use. Or you can use this um, larger needle from this hair extension weaving kit that I found at Dollar Tree in the hair accessories aisle. So I decided to go ahead and use that one. So the largest needle in this little kit. And as far as binding thread goes, you can pretty much use anything. I will say waxed thread usually works better. Um, it slides easier through the papers. Um, I decided you could use the weaving kit or like the thread that came with that kit if you wanted to. Um, or I could have used it if I wanted to, but I decided I wanted to use this pink embroidery thread. And I don't own wax thread, but I have this little waxing block that I just pull whatever thread that I want to use through it and then it waxes it and I did get it off of Amazon I think for like three or four dollars it's pretty inexpensive compared to buying waxed thread but again you can use any um, type of thread that you have on hand I wouldn't use like a regular sewing thread it's too thin you do want something that's a little bit thicker than that but Dollar Tree also sells embroidery thread in the crafter square section so now it's time to bind the signatures into the spine and I typically like to work from the back to the front of the journal. So I'm going to be starting off with the last signature and then the last row of holes in um, on the spine. So after you thread your needle, you wanna have about two journal lengths of thread available. And then I'm going to take my signature and I'm gonna put my needle directly through the center hole. And there's different ways you can bind. This is just the easiest way, in my opinion, um, if you're just getting started. And you're gonna pull that through to where you have a little tail at the end and you can use um, washi tape or something to kind of hold it from sliding all the way through. And then all I'm going to do is match up the holes in the spine. So I'm gonna go directly into that last center hole on the spine and then pull that all the way through. And you do want to leave a little bit of slack. You can tighten everything at the end, but um, you don't want to pull it too tight until you're ready to tie it off. And now I'm going to go directly through the top of that last row. And you can do top or bottom. Um, you can go through the top hole or the bottom hole first if you want. And then I'm going to match up the hole and go through the top of the signature and sometimes you might need to kind of separate papers like I'm doing here to make sure that you're going 
um, through the holes if things kind of get um, separated. And then I'm going to go jump over the middle hole and then go to the bottom hole. And sorry that it's kind of a little bit out of frame. I was trying to um, see what I was doing and I couldn't see where the camera was at. Um, but I'm gonna go directly, again, jump over that middle hole, go down to the bottom hole. And again, you can kind of pull papers up to see and kind of guide your needle through all of the holes that it's supposed to go through. So just take it slow. If it doesn't want to easily glide through the papers, um, just go one by one and kind of guide your needle through that way. You don't want to make unnecessary holes in your signature. Um, so now I'm going to pull that through and then I'm going to go through the last hole in that row on the spine. And so once I pull that through, I'm going to go back through the middle hole on the spine and then through the middle hole on the signature. Um, and you want to be careful when you're doing this not to thread the thread that's already there. Um, so you kind of want to go off to the side. And again, I apologize that I'm out of frame right here. Again, I'm trying to see what I'm doing. Um, but I think you guys get the idea. You want to go back through that center hole. And again, go slow. Don't try to poke holes where they don't belong. And again, you really want to try not to re-thread the thread that's already existing because um, that's going to mess up the integrity of or the durability of the stitch. Um, so once you get that center hole back through um, or the needle back through that center hole, uh, you're just going to pull it through and then take the needle off and then you can kind of pull everything together and it will kind of pull in the papers nice and tight and then you can tie it off. You can either tie it off in a traditional, I guess, knot, or you can tie it in a bow. And you wanna make sure that um, your stitching is nice and tight on the outside of the spine. I like to do little bows sometimes on mine or a knot and then a bow. Um, but I like to leave my strings dangling. I think it adds to that. And the next two signatures I think had envelopes in and I'm going to show you how you can cover that up if you don't like the strings or the binding showing. So now I'm going to work on signature number two going through that center row and then the last row will be the first signature. And as I mentioned earlier, if you don't want your binding to be showing on the inside of your journal, you can use an envelope on the inside of your signature and then seal it up and then open it up on the other end to use as a pocket.
After all of my signatures are bound, I just like to flick through and make sure that everything is secure, nothing's moving around too much, and the more stitches that you do, um, the more secure your signatures are going to be. Um, this is just a simple three stitch, but I'm just making sure that my signatures look good, nothing's sticking out, everything looks even, um, and I'm good to go. So now is the really fun part where I get to kind of embellish the journal. And sometimes I like to embellish the journal before I bind it into the spine just because I like to sew on a lot of my pages, but I wanted to make this video as simple as possible. I didn't want to overdo it. Um, so I'm just going to kind of stuff things into those pockets that I made and add a few things with some paper clips because I'm actually going to be gifting this journal to a friend. I'm not going to keep this, so I'm not going to decorate it with some of my personal ephemera. Um, I'm going to leave that up to the recipient um, and they can kind of move things around and use some of the, the things that I included with the journal. So I'm just kind of going through some of my paper stash. I have some extra cuts of scrapbooking paper that I used in previous projects. I have a few envelopes, junk junk mail envelopes that I decorated, um, and little things like that. I have a ton of stuff and it's so unorganized. I need to figure out a better system of organizing the stuff that goes into the journals or my embellishments, if you will, for the journals. So you're going to see a lot of Dollar Tree supplies in this process, like those cards off to the left are from Dollar Tree. Um, the phonics, first words, and those I get from the teaching tree section at Dollar Tree. And then the jumbo plane cards are great in junk journals. There's a couple of books that I picked up from Dollar Tree as well that I tear some of the pages out. And I'm using my Tombow Aqua Mono Glue. <laughs> that's a mouthful. But that's the glue I like to use um, a lot in my journals. It's like actually my favorite glue. And I will leave it linked down below in the description box in my Amazon storefront. And I have a bunch of Dollar Tree paper clips that I'm using as well. Um, and again, just using scraps of paper and little journaling cards that I've cut from paper packs and things that I just think go well with the theme of this journal. So not really thinking too much about it. Um, just kind of pulling things from my stash at random to add to this journal.
One of my favorite products from Dollar Tree to use in my junk journals are these rub-on transfers that you get in the sticker section. They're perfect to embellish a page, whether you're doing it like I am right here and using the whole sheet to kind of make this rub-on transfer collage, or you can cut things out individually and embellish a page that way. But it works perfect um, for these blank pages or these blank white pages that I don't like in my journals to um, kind of embellish them.
All right, guys, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful if you are new to junk journaling or maybe if you have been interested in wanting to make a journal for yourself. I also hope this video gave you guys some ideas of how to use different products from Dollar Tree in your journals. And make sure you click that subscribe button if you want to see more journaling content from me or more tutorials. And again, I will leave my junk journal playlist linked down below in the description box. So go check that out. And until my next video, thank you guys so much for watching and take care.